Hello everybody and welcome back to Alex Elliott Golf and welcome back to a brand new video. You join me today on the 4th here at Carden Park, a par 5, 522 yards long, bunkers down the left, trouble down the right, pretty intimidating tee shot, really nice hole though. So today's video is all about 5 things you need in your golf game, yes, 5 things you need in your golf game to play your best golf. Now to play your best golf, it not doesn't necessarily mean you have to swing at your best. I explain to you 5 shots that you need in your golf game to help you play your best golf. So if you're new to the channel guys, don't forget to smash that subscribe button and hit that thumbs up button too. Now, before we do that, I want you to comment down below what are the five things that help you play your best golf. They could be a superstition, left shoe on first, right shoe on first, they could be a swing thought, a certain shot, a feeling. Comment down below, let me know what they are in your golf game. I'm gonna get straight into today's video and show you what I think are the five things you need in your golf game to play your best golf. So the first thing I think everyone needs in their golf game is good alignment. I'm gonna use two alignment sticks to help me explain this. So firstly, every time we align to a target, now here on the fourth at Carden Park, there's bunkers down the left. So my ball to target line is gonna be aiming slightly down the left of this fairway. So if I place my ball to target line down here, and that's gonna form where my club face is gonna be at 90 degrees to that. And with the driver, we always use the top edge at 90 degrees to my ball to target line. We can see that's aiming down the left. Now, where people go wrong is they feel like they aim their shoulders to where they want the ball to go. What I want you to feel is that your shoulders, hips, and your feet run parallel left to your ball to target line. So if I was to place my second line down here, my blue line, always runs parallel left to my red. Very often, like I said before, we'll aim our shoulders or we'll aim our shoulders and we really have poor alignment and then we have to make compensatory errors in our swing, so just for that. Or how many times do we feel like we are, oh, hit that one really well, but it ended up to the right, it ended up to the left. Generally, rather than looking into actually, was it a bad swing or bad this or bad that, it could have just been bad alignment. Let's hit it down that fairway. A little bit like that. So that's finishing just slightly right of my alignment. Really nice fade off those bunkers, really into a nice position. Let's head into the second scenario and the second thing we need to play our best golf. So the second shot we need. Now, this is something which you might think, oh, well, if we're playing our best golf, we don't need this. But in reality, we're gonna have a situation on the golf course where we need to get ourselves out of trouble, no matter if we're playing our best golf or our worst golf. So in my opinion, the second shot that we need is that punch shot from out the trees, that one that gets it nice and low, gets it running up towards the fairway to give us an opportunity to save par. So let's talk about how we can hit that low punch shot. I placed myself up the right hand side here on the fourth at Carden Park. Now I've got a lot of room to run this one up the right hand side and get it up as close to the green as I can on this par five. I'm in a little bit of trouble, but if I've got this go-to punch shot, I can get myself out of trouble, almost have an opportunity to get birdie, but most likely to save par. So how do we play this shot? Now, what I want you to understand is that if we want the ball to go lower, we need to reduce the loft and we need to hit down on the golf ball a little bit. So we need to make sure the two things move in tandem. We need to reduce the loft and we need to hit down on the golf ball more. We also need to do this with a little bit of less of club head speed because that's gonna help reduce the spin. So if we use those three factors, reduce the loft, hit down on it more and reduce the speed, we're gonna hit it a little bit lower, allow that ball to run up and up that fairway. So how do we do this shot? First port of call is that we need to make sure we grip down on this golf club slightly. So I make sure there's a little bit more grip showing at the top than at the bottom. Place this golf club down behind the golf ball. Look for a ball position that's just to the right of my stance. So right half of my stance, favoring my right or my back foot if you're a left-handed player. From this position here, I like to feel as though I pull my left foot slightly out the way. This helps me make my swing direction a little bit left. And I just want you to think of this as a compensatory movement for hitting down on this golf ball more. So once in this position here, I want to feel like I've got 70 to 30% of my weight favoring my lead side. And I'm really going to feel and focus that I hold the low punchy finish. And I want you to feel like you pose that because that will encourage you to swing a little bit slower, swing a little bit, swing a little bit more controlled, and achieve that punch shot. So from the top, how are we gonna do this? Club down, grip, so we've got a little bit more grip showing at the top than at the bottom. Ball towards the back of the stance, pull the left foot back out the way slightly, weight onto the left side, and really feel like we hold and pose that finish. Moving that ball back is gonna help us get more down on this golf ball, it's gonna help us achieve a little bit more forward shaft lean at address, and therefore hopefully a little bit more at impact helping you control those three, one, two of those three factors we said. The final one's up to you in the speed of your swing. 
Let's punch it out there, get it back into play. And behold that finish, get it running all the way up that fairway, back into position. In a par five, it's going to hopefully give you opportunity to make a birdie or a net birdie, but ultimately get you out of trouble, back into the fairway. So it's definitely a shot we need, whether we're playing good golf or bad golf. Let's head on to shot number three. Now, shot number three is the bunker shot, and we need to be able to play this shot because, again, no matter how good a golf we are, we're going to get in trouble and we're possibly going to get in at least one bunker around. Now, your golf course may not have any bunkers, but I'm going to show you how you're going to play this bunker shot. Really nice, simple technique to help you get it out onto the green and hopefully save your par. Shot number three, the bunker shot. Now, a lot of you guys watching this video will avoid these bunkers at your peril and really just generally not look forward to going into them. They're hard to play out of for many people. Now, why is it hard for a lot of amateurs to play out these bunkers? But we see the professionals have so much success. Now, what I really feel is that when we stood into this bunker, a lot of you guys watching this video won't allow yourself to open up the club enough, expose the loft and expose the bounce. We then therefore get this leading edge digging into the sand, which makes it very hard then to get this ball out and onto the green consistently. We may have some success, but ultimately it's going to be hard to create a consistent amount of success there. So what can we do in terms of our setup that's really going to help us get this bounce of this club working like a hydrofoil through this sand to allow it to cushion the sand and the ball out onto the green. Really nice, simple routine for you here. So point number one, hold this golf club up into the air. Now for, for a lot of players, this will be very daunting now. Open this golf club up slightly and take our hold. So relative to you, your club face is slightly open. From this position here, we're going to feel that like we bring this golf club down to the golf ball. Now remember, we can't touch the sand here, but we're going to hover it above where we are. We're taking this grip where we've got even amount at the top end and the bottom end. So we've got a nice even hold of this golf club. From this position here, I want you to take a wide stance, a normal distance from the golf ball. And I like to feel that my left toe or my lead foot is pointing towards where I want the ball to go. From this position here, I like you to take a shuffle away from target, so away from the camera. So it feels like I'm stretching for this golf ball slightly, and you will feel that way. From now, we want the ball position to be a club head inside my left heel. That's really gonna help me be steep into the sand, but shallow relative to the ball. And now, my last point here is sit down to this golf shot. So we've got a sit down, which we go this way. So we sit down and forward. So you can see here, I'm not sitting down and back. I'm sitting down and forwards. This gets me lowering my center of gravity, but my weight favoring my left side. So from this position here, I'm in a, an area where I can be using the bounce. I can throw the golf club and the bounce through the sand. And the only feeling I want you to have here in the sand is that I'm going to point the loft back at me through the golf ball. And that's really going to help me use this sand like this and not dig into the sand this way because anytime we dig into the sand it's going to be very very hard to get this ball out. So from the top, club up into the air, open up slightly, even hold, hover above the golf ball, shuffle away slightly, sit down and left into it for a right-handed player, point the loft back at you. A little bit like that. Really nice shot, good amount of sand and they're looking for here the sand to cushion that ball onto the green. So that's shot number three, what's shot number four? So let's finally head on to points number four and five. And I like to think of these two points together and it's all evolved around the short stick. So let's talk about two simple feelings that we're gonna to combine together as points number four and five that are ultimately gonna help you play your best golf and the five add up, the, add up to the five things you need in your golf game. Let's head to the green. So point number four and pace control on the green. We're on the green here at Cardon Park, and this is one of the smallest greens here. And I've still got a 50 foot putt, so some of these get fairly big. Now, what I want you to feel here is, this is gonna be a very, very visual tip, which is gonna help you establish good pace control. Very often, I feel like a lot of people get very lazy when they get to the green, and we get lazy on these longer putts because we're not expected to hold them. But then at the same time, we need to make sure we give ourselves opportunity to have a stress-free second putt. So what can we do and build into our routine? Now, very often we would stand to the side of the golf ball and look at the golf ball this way, or even behind the golf ball and look at it this way. Now, anytime we do that, I believe that it's gonna shorten your vision. Think of the scenario when you hit it just past the flag on a par three or on a par four approach shot, and it looks really close. You get there and that golf ball gets further away. 
your perception of distance is not as good as people think it is. So how could we even this up? What I want you to do is I want you to walk to the side of the golf ball now and create a triangle evenly distanced between yourself, your golf ball, and the flag. This is going to give you a good perspective of distance and a good perspective of the undulations of the greens. And once we've done this, we've almost walked half the length of the putt and that's really going to give us a good perception of what we want to do. Stand over the golf ball, couple of looks towards target, getting a perception of what we want to feel and really allowing ourselves to picture we get this ball inside that bin lid and give ourselves a chance of an easy stress-free two putt. A little bit like that. So I've hit that one to two and a half feet, giving myself a chance of holding that second putt. Now that's going to lead me nicely onto point number five, being able to hole out consistently out on the golf course. Now, what I want you to think about of this, this long putt and this pace putting is that by giving yourself a, a, a view of the whole putt and walking to the side of it, it gives you a good perspective of distance. If we're stood behind it and have a long way from the flag, we don't want to shorten our vision and look down onto the putt because that will create a situation where mo most of the time we're going to be short of the flag or going to be intermittent with our distance control. Point number four, give yourself a good look at the putt. Even if it's a long way away, create a triangle between your golf ball, yourself and the flag, equal distance to make sure we get a good view of what the putt's actually doing. Leading me on nicely to the final putt, the trouble distance, two and a half to three feet. One that we all don't like to see and sometimes we leave ourselves these and that could be a good putt from distance. Now, how could we stop feeling so troubled on these short putts? This is something that I've, I've done myself and I really think has really helped me in my golf game. Now, a lot of people like to use a line on their golf ball. Now, that's absolutely fine and you, you might feel that helps you with alignment, but sometimes I feel that when we put a line in our golf ball, we then feel that we have to roll that ball down a tightrope. Now, if we get the pace correct from two and a half, three feet, or from any putt for a matter of fact, this golf ball and this hole is effectively three golf balls wide. So we've got an alleyway now of this size, not having to walk it down a tightrope like this. So I want you to get rid of that line, and I don't want you to be tuned in on is the pace and let the rest do itself. Remember, we get the right pace, the effective hole size is three golf balls wide. If I ask you a question now, could you put a golf ball down, a, down an alleyway three golf balls wide? I think you'd say yes, you could. So let's hit this one in. So ultimately, let's stop being so perfect for point number five on those short putts. Thank you for watching today's video on Alex Elite Golf. You have my five points that are gonna help you play your best golf, and ultimately, the five things you need in your golf game to play your best golf. Remember, number one, good alignment. Number two, that punch shot to get you out of trouble. Number three, the bunker shot. And number four and five, the good ability to have good pace control from distance, and to stop being so perfect on those short putts. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, guys, don't forget to smash that subscribe button. We're gonna create a really good community here. We're gonna help you improve your golf. And as well as that, hit the thumbs up button too. Thank you for watching and see you next time on Alex Elliott Golf.